This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. There are only two things that are certain in life. One, sadly, that's death. And two, maybe even more sadly, is tax. Okay, they will both happen at some point in your lifetime. Uh, there is no accounting standard dealing with death, uh, but there is an accounting standard dealing with taxes, uh, and it's IS12. So we're looking at IS12, income taxes, and how to account for the tax on a company's profits. Uh, there are two areas to the standard. The first one that we'll look at is the world of current tax, which is effectively just looking at the amount of tax that you have payable to revenue and customs and what you should then recognise within your financial statements with regards to a tax expense in relation to the tax that is owed. But then there is also secondly to look at this complex accounting area of deferred tax. It's a pure accounting entry. If you mention it to any tax advisor or anybody who works in the tax department, they'll look at you as if you're crazy. OK, it's just a, uh, an adjustment that we make to the numbers in the accounts uh, to take account of the matching concept. It doesn't actually go through there and have any impact on the tax balance that we owe to revenue and customs. So what we've got, if you drop back into the notes in the earlier chapter, was it there on your published company accounts? If we just look at what we had from the statement of financial position, uh, the balances that we're looking at are your tax payable balance within current liabilities, and then your deferred tax balance within your non current liabilities on the statement of financial position. Okay, we will need to be able to go through and calculate those figures. Also, as well, if you go to look at the statement of profit or loss, uh, you've got there your operating costs down to your profit before tax. And then we need to be able to calculate that income tax expense figure. OK, and that income tax expense figure will be made up partly of current tax expense and a deferred tax expense as well. Whilst on the statement of financial position, uh, you have two separate account balances, one to identify the deferred tax liability and one to identify the tax payable. If you're looking for easy marks within the exam. So if you've got a published company accounts question, working out the tax payable is one of the most straightforward marks that you will go through there and get. The tax payable that you have at the end of the year. Uh, is just your year end estimate. So you do your tax computation at the end of the year, you pay your tax advisor to do it for you, they will give you an estimate of that tax bill and that. I'll have to sneeze. Uh, <coughs> oh, pardon me, bless me. Okay. Uh, and that year end estimate is what you then provide for within your financial statement. It doesn't need any adjustment whatsoever. So there's a nice simple mark to copy from the additional information into your financial statements. Uh, so if we go through there and have a look at the rest of your current tax, you know, we've just said that you've got there within your financial statements, the tax payable it is the, the year end estimates. OK, so there you have it. That's what you see there in the statement of financial position. Just be careful that then also gets expensed through profit or loss. But you need to adjust for any under or over provision from the previous year. Uh, so, yeah, going back into the world of IS8, you're not going back and retrospectively correcting any under or over provision in the prior year's accounts. If you didn't pay enough or you paid too much, you make the adjustment this year. OK, it is an accounting estimate and accounting estimates are dealt with prospectively, aren't they? Yeah, in the current year. Uh, 
So the way in which we need to go through and look at it and make sure that we're happy with it is just to work the example that you've got there within the notes to do with current tax. Because what you've got there is it wants us to prepare the extracts from the statement of profit or loss, uh, the statement of financial position at our 31st of March 2015 date. It's very typical of what you see within a published company accounts question is that you have the trial balance uh, and you can see there that you have the debit column on the left and the credit column on the right. Okay, so you have a credit balance on your current tax account. Uh, it then goes through to say within the additional information, uh, at the end of the year, a provision of $3.5 million is required. Okay, so that's quite simple. That will be the figure for our year end estimate that goes on the SFP. There will also be an expense recognised for the $3.5 million, but that will need to be adjusted for the under or over provision of the tax liability. Where is that under or over provision? It is there. Okay. Don't start trying to remember what we do with regards to under provisions and over provisions and, and whether we add them or subtract them to the tax charge. Let's just draw it up as a T account. OK, so what we've got is if we're preparing the published company accounts. We want the statement of financial position balance. We want the statement of profit or loss. So on the SFP. You have your tax payable balance within your liabilities. And then the statement of profit or loss, you have the income tax expense. OK, uh, remember, your tax payable should be easy marks to get if we're working there in. Thousands of dollars here, the tax payable is just that estimate. At the end of the year. Is that the 3.5 million? So 3,500,000. ,500, In terms of the income tax, we're just going to do a small working. Uh, we can do the working immediately underneath. Uh, so what you've got there is I would draw up a T account. That is going to be my tax T account. And then all I do is just insert the brought forward figure on the correct side. So that figure is from the TB. It is on the credit side. And then I just follow my normal accounting treatments. So we've estimated the year end balance to be 3,500. So that's carry forward on the debit side, ready to be brought forward on the credit side in the subsequent year and then paid. Uh, but it doesn't balance up, does it? So you've got 3,500 on the left. You have 3,500 on the right. Your balancing figure, the difference is there at 3,100. That figure that you have on the T account is whereby you have recorded the expense in profit or loss. OK, so your income tax expense, when you clear out the account. You're crediting that tax T account, debiting your statement of profit or loss with the 3100. So you have the expense in the statement of profit or loss. The carry forward is on the statement of financial position and I'm not even thinking about whether it's an under or an over provision. OK, there we go. Uh, if you like, uh, if you want to be technical, uh, I wouldn't recommend it, but there we go. Uh, is it an under or is it an over provision? Well, as that tax charge is being reduced from 3,500, 
is it there to 3 100 then we must have over provided in the previous year so because we provided too much last year yeah that extra provision that we made last year will then be offset against this reporting periods profits so any over provision you will deduct from your estimated tax expense therefore any under provision will be added on to the estimated tax expense and that would then be on the debit side of your trial balance but I think that's just a little bit too much. I think the key bits are to go through there and ensure that you can get the easy marks with regards to the tax payable. And then with the tax expense, make sure there that you draw yourself up a T account. And if you do that, you will not go too far wrong within any exam question.